Hello and welcome to, well not the Dragon Shed, for another soap making video. Now what's different about this is that 2021 is going to be my soap making year, really. Um, whereas most of my other um, videos have been mainly craft, this year it's going to be mainly soap. <laughs> um, because I've decided I'm going to actually sell my soaps now rather than just make them for home use and gifting. Because basically... Um, there are only so many soaps that you can make for yourself <laughs> in in the real world and there are so many, so many soaps you can gift so it gets to a point where you've got to either stop or start selling so I've got to the start selling point and as of uh, the end of... no? yes? end of the year so the... Um, well should be today actually as of today my recipes are now licensed officially um, they've been checked and chemically assessed, so they're all safe to, to use anyway. Although, you know, I've been using these recipes for a year now, personally, <laughs> and I've had no reaction, so I didn't think it was entirely necessary, but uh, it was kind of the choice that if I'm going to sell them to people that are beyond my own, um, kind of, my bubble, my family, whatever, then I would rather make sure they are chemically... Um, checked and verified and all that kind of stuff so they're safe to sell um, so yeah um, this is my first soap of the year or what will be my first soap of the year um, and it's a repeat yay <laughs> um, two years ago now uh, 2018 in January um, I did a series of um, cosmetics and soap making kind of videos just to I don't know, explore the idea um, and the soap making kind of inspired me to then do soap making. Um, so this was actually one of the first um, soap designs I, I made um, from that kind of first first blush of the idea. Um, and it's a really simple soap. It's what's called a Bastille soap. So uh, to clarify that, a Castile soap um, contains just olive oil. Um, which is a great soap, it's really soft, it's really good, it's really uh, gentle kind of soap, but it takes forever to cure. It can take up to six months, sometimes up to eight, to be um, hard enough to use properly. So what soap makers do is they make a Bastille soap, which is a bastardised offshoot of a Castile, where you use up to 10% of other oils to counteract the softness that the olive oil gives. So in this case, I've got 5% um, coconut and 5% palm. Um, and yes, palm oil is considered generally bad at the minute. Um, what I'm using is an organic RSPO certified um, supplier. And I have tried a number of different variations, but I cannot find a replacement for palm oil. The particular uh, benefits you get from palm oil you can get by using seven or eight other oils but then it turns what should be a really simple recipe into <laughs> something massive so yeah I'm I'm opting to use palm oil but the oil I'm using is um, organic and fair trade and RSPO certified so it's uh, as guilt free as you can be with palm oil if I find a formulation of one or two other oils that would match it then I'd use that but uh, I've been trying for a while now and I can't find a variation that can replace palm oil so yeah if you're anti palm oil totally I'm sorry you can't use my soaps but I'm being as guilt free as possible and all of my ingredients are organic as far as I can get so this is a really simple soap um, and I made and I went wrong <laughs> Um, so the soap making itself is really easy, so you put your lye water into your oils, blend it up um, as a Castile or Bastille soap, it's not going to get to a really thick trace, you're going to get very very light trace whatever you do, um, even with like a powered mixer, power, power blender, but it, it, you know, once it's mixed, it's mixed and that's all you need to do really. Um, you can really sit there and kill the engine on your blender. Um, for 15, 20, half an hour, um, but it's not going to add any thickness to the to the trace. That's something I learned a couple of years ago. Um, 
so yeah, it's really simple this one. It's um, got some blue uh, ultramarine colouring. Um, again, I'm trying to go as, as much uh, natural oxides as possible. I've got some of my soaps this year will have micas in, uh, but I'm going mostly for clays and nat natural everything, <laughs> as, as far as I can. But some colours you just can't get in the clay. So yeah, um, good thing about ultramarine is you can get ultramarine pink and violet and, and purple. As well as the blue, so it's very useful in that in that regard. Um, so yeah, just mix them together until everything is homogenous and you can't see the oil separating that kind of thing. Um, the fragrance I'm using for this one is the same as I did last time. That's winter spice, which is it's a bit pumpkin spice but with less cinnamon. <laughs> is what it is. Um, and then obviously poured it into moulds. Um, I haven't yet dared to try and do a Bastille soap in a loaf um, because I'm not sure how quickly it would solidify and whether I could get it out the mould a day later or I'd need to wait a week. Um, as it is, um, I demoulded these after about day and a half, three days, no day and a half, two days and they were still a little sticky but that's kind of the way with Bastille soap, it, it doesn't hang on to that so much. Um, my other soaps I've, I've slightly changed and adapted my recipes to add a little bit of um, cast oil which helps solidify and um, and lather a little bit but I haven't done it in this one. <laughs> Probably should have done because that would have made it easier and quicker to demold. So yeah, um, the decoration for this was going to be really simple. Um, I've got one of these little plastic uh, stencils and I was putting that over the top of the poured soaps and then sprinkling on some bio glitter, which looked fabulous. <laughs> Great, you know, sprayed it with a little bit of alcohol as you do. Um, being careful not to put too much because I know that can cause the bio glitter to go a little bit funky. And then left them, and then when I uncovered them, all the bio glitter kind of melted. <laughs> so it got a little bit sludgy and disappeared. So um, I then had to do it again essentially so I used the same um, a stencil and I just mixed a little bit of oil with a little bit of mica this time and just kind of stenciled on snowflakes. It doesn't look as good as I'd like it to. Um, I've actually got a snowflake mould on order so I can actually do snowflake shaped soaps in the future but it worked for now. <laughs> um, and getting back into the, the swing of doing a regular soap like this, it was great because it, it reminded me of all the stupid things I do when I'm making soap. Um, and during the process of uh, measuring up the life of this one, I spilled some on the floor in the kitchen and um, didn't realise. And um, I'd done all my tidying up and everything else. When my parents came home, <laughs> there were patches of kind of the glaze on the tile that had gone. And the brass divider between the kitchen and the hallway that had um, tarnished. Yeah, I wasn't popular. <laughs> so, um, for future reference, <laughs> make sure you clean up all spillages as soon as they're made, particularly lye. And um, yeah, don't leave the kitchen until you're certain it's clean. <laughs> so yeah, um, this soap is available now as I'm recording this because um, I kind of pre-released it in December. Its official release date is the 30th of December, um, so there will be a link uh, in the description box to the eBay listing um, and there will be details, more details about it on my, my blog post which I'll also link in the description. So I'm hoping you've had a pleasant Christmas and um, looking forward to a year of soap making. Um, I'm currently doing a bit of a, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a discount thing. Um, anyone who buys in the next two months will get 10% off. Anyone who's a key worker will get 20% off. And that goes for the rest of the year. And essentially, if you're a key worker, you get the whole, you get 20% off for the whole year. So, yeah. Can I buy some soaps? <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm going to kind of review this in the middle of the year and we'll see where I go from there. Um, but at the minute I'm just enjoying the creative bit. I'm just slightly running out of space to put soaps in. But that's just the way the, these things go. So.
So hopefully I'll see you in the shop. Hopefully I'll, I'll get your orders, any comments, any questions, any uh, requests. Always welcome. So see you again next week.